In this video, I'm going to cover how to calculate the energy changes from a chemical reaction. The overall energy change of a chemical reaction depends upon two processes, bond breaking in the reactants and bond making in the products. In order to understand this, it would make sense for us to draw displayed formulae so that we can see what bonds are needed to be broken in the reactants and what bonds are formed when we make the products. In this example, hydrogen reacts with oxygen and water is formed. This equation is not currently balanced. In order for us to calculate the energy change accurately, we have to use a balanced equation. To balance this equation, we have to start by putting a 2 at the start of the H2O because we have two oxygens on the left and we need to end up with two oxygens on the right hand side. When we've done that, we notice we now have four hydrogen atoms on the right hand side, so we need to put a 2 next to the H2. This equation is now balanced, but this is still not useful to us when we are trying to work out the energy change. To work out the energy change, we need to be able to see what bonds are being broken in the reactants and what bonds are being made in the products. I am going to draw the displayed formulae of each of the substances in this reaction. To begin with, let's look at the two moles of hydrogen. Each hydrogen molecule would have a single bond between two hydrogen atoms. There are two moles of them, and I can represent them by drawing this twice. So I am using the number at the start to decide how many times I draw the molecule. For the oxygen, it's simply two oxygen atoms attached to each other. But oxygen has to form two bonds. So it would look like this. With the two oxygen atoms joined to each other by a double bond. For the water on the other side, each water molecule has an oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. Again, just as I had with the hydrogens, I have two moles of water and I can represent them by drawing the water molecule a second time. Now that we have the displayed formulae, I can see that these are the bonds that need breaking. And these are the bonds that need to be made. There is an energy change associated with bond breaking and there is an energy change associated with bond making. In order to break any chemical bond, energy has to be used up. This energy is usually absorbed from the surroundings. So bond breaking is an endothermic process. Bond making is the exact opposite of bond breaking. And so bond making is an exothermic process and releases energy to the surroundings. To calculate the overall energy change, I will start first by calculating how much energy is needed to break the bonds in my reactants. The bonds I need to break are this hydrogen-hydrogen bond, as well as this one, and then of course the oxygen-oxygen double bond. Each of these bonds requires different amounts of energy to break it. The two hydrogen bonds, of course, have the same amount of energy requirement for breaking them. So if I wanted to break two moles of hydrogen bonds, I would have to have a look at this table over here and find the hydrogen-hydrogen bond and its value. This is the amount of energy it takes to break one mole of hydrogen bonds. Its units are kilojoules per mole. So if I'm breaking two moles of hydrogen bonds, 
I would have to times that value by 2. So for the hydrogen-hydrogen bonds, it's going to be two of these HH bonds. So it's 432 times by two. And that gives 864 kilojoules. For the oxygen-oxygen double bond, the value is over here. 498 kilojoules per mole. I'm only breaking one mole of these bonds, so I don't need to times it by anything. So the total amount of energy required to break the oxygen-oxygen double bond is just 498 kilojoules. Now I need to find the total amount of energy required to break the bonds in my reactants. I can do this by simply adding them together. When I add them together, the value I get is 1,362 kilojoules. That is the amount of energy required to break the bonds in my starting materials, my reactants. I will now do the same for the bond making side in my products. My products are two moles of water. Each water molecule has two bonds between an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom. So I have two OH bonds in one water molecule and two OH bonds in the other. In total, I have four OH bonds that require making. If I look in my table, I can see the OH bond is there and each mole of OH bonds releases 463 kilojoules of energy when it is formed. So I would take 4 multiplied by 463. That gives me 1,852 kilojoules. That is the amount of energy that would be released when these bonds are formed. If I compare the amount of energy required for bond breaking to the amount of energy required, or released rather, from bond making, I can see that this reaction releases more energy than was required to break the bonds. This reaction is going to be exothermic overall. To find the overall energy change, what I would then need to do is to subtract the two values. You always subtract the bond making from the bond breaking. So yes, this will give us a negative number. So if I take bond breaking minus bond making, I will get my overall energy change. The symbol for an overall energy change is delta H. I will cover why it's called delta H in a different video under my A-level section. In this instance, to find the overall energy change, I will take 1362 minus 1852, and that will give me minus 490 kilojoules per mole. This is my overall energy change. It is a negative number, and that tells me that this reaction is exothermic overall. I can show this on an energy profile diagram. My reactants were clearly at a higher energy state than my products because they released 490 kilojoules of energy to the surroundings. So this is going to be an exothermic reaction, and so my reactants will be higher up than my products. I could, of course, write down 2H2 plus O2 as my reactants, because I know what they are. But I'm drawing this so that you can use it for general reactions. My products are 2H2O, two moles of water. 
I have to put energy in to start the reaction by breaking the bonds. So I have to put in 1,362 kilojoules of energy to break the bonds. That is known as the activation energy. When the new bonds are formed in the products, 1,852 kilojoules is released. So a lot of energy is released. I can label this energy profile diagram with the following. First of all, this energy in is my activation energy and it's the energy used to break the bonds in my reactants. Activation energy is given the symbol E with a subscript A, energy for activation. It's the energy needed to break the bonds in the reactants. The overall energy change, which was negative 490 kilojoules, was the amount of energy that the reactants lost to the surroundings, which is why it's negative. That can be labeled on my graph as the difference between my reactants and my products. In this instance, the reactants have lost energy, so my arrow is going downwards. This is my overall energy change, and the symbol for it is delta H. I will write overall energy change here, so you can always remember that. Overall energy change. So to summarize, in this video, we have looked at how to work out the overall energy change for a chemical reaction. We saw that it's quite useful to draw the displayed formulae of reactants and products so that we can see what bonds are being broken in the reactants and what bonds are being formed in the products. Once we can identify the bonds being broken and formed, we can calculate the amount of energy required for bond breaking and the amount of energy required for bond making. We then take the difference between the two, bond breaking minus bond making in that specific way, to find the overall energy change. The symbol for overall energy change is delta H. And of course, we can draw an energy profile diagram showing the activation energy and the overall energy change as shown.